All right, this is Jazz. This is Giving Up the Ghost. Uh, my partner, Cher, is not here right now. However, this was very important that we get this interview out. And we are with Kristen from Square Pig Tours. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on a Saturday morning. <laughs> Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> this is great stuff, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So we, we interviewed you on the fly a couple of years back for uh, during Doors Open uh, at the jail. Love the jail. Like, that is one of our favorite places. And uh, you run the group called Friends of Vaughn Street Jail. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Excellent. So had you done anything recently? Were, you know, what, what kind of, you had Doors Open, you did the jail again this year is that yeah we've been able to keep running the event um because we've just had to make some adaptations for the public so that you know things were safe with covid issues Mm -hmm. and stuff so now we're uh back and running the event like normal and uh so we did it last may and it was a really nice turnout and of course my volunteers love doing it (laughs) and it's just a lot of fun you know your volunteers i have to say they are just the most precocious. I, I, I don't know if what the word is like they're into it, right? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. they're into it. They, they know their roles. And I just I just love it when they do their interpretations and they, they do their speaking parts and stuff because it's like they're they're there. Like, I mean, they're part of the jail. Like they're from that time, like just the effort and everything they put into it. There must be much like a lot of fun for them. You must have the same people that come out all the time. Hey. Yeah, well, the lo- yeah, exactly. I mean, that's been the, the, the great part about it is that, you know, I, I give them the information and encourage them to kind of glean out the stuff that really stands out for them. And then they can kind of create around that part. And um, they have so much fun. And then afterwards, we have such a good time. Plus the fact that we keep winning the, <laughs> the best tour experience award every year, you know, really makes them feel good, too. Right. So, um, I do get a lot of my volunteers that return every year and uh, plus a couple of new ones every time. So it, it's great. I mean, they really have a great time and have fun with it. Yeah, hands down, it is the best attraction, like seriously, because when and whenever do you get that opportunity to see such a piece of history? Like we, you know, at Giving Up the Ghost, we're all about the haunting, but we, we, we love the history tied in with it, right? Like it's just a, mm-hmm. such a a gem of history for Winnipeg. I I mean, a creepy, awful, horrible gem, but it's a gem nonetheless, right? So, well, yeah. And that's, that's probably one of the reasons why I love the building so much, because it is so unique in terms of its collective history Mm -hmm. and how it impacted not just Winnipeg or Manitoba's history, but even national history, because, you know, we had the first provincial juvenile judge come out of that situation. Um, you know, we've had like so many, cha- like first public health nurse in oh. Canada oh, I didn't because know of her visit to the jail. Like just big things that changed Canadian wow. history. Right. So it's it's a really neat place to learn about people and history and uh, also the, the diversity of people. It's right. the other thing I like about it because when you go to doors open and you check out other buildings, it predominantly emphasizes your standard white Anglo-Saxon Protestant male and their successes. Right, exactly. You know, whereas this is covering people from um, the working class, the immigrants, Mm -hmm. women, Mm -hmm. children, mental health, poverty, yeah, um, you know, labor rights, all kinds of stuff, you know, is all encompassed under this one roof. Right, for sure. Like, has there, would there ever be a time or has there ever been a time I know you kind of have an in there. Like, are you ever able to do a tour exclusively outside of Doors Open, or is that not part of the agreement that you have with no. the province? Ah, no, nothing crap. at this time. And I've been trying to push that for twenty years. I don't uh, doubt that since I started on this thing. So, and that's very frustrating uh, mm. for me and a lot of people because they want to get in, and um, yeah, it's just a bit of a. It's really frustrating. So, you know, that's one reason why I wrote the book, um, was to offer more information to the public that I can't fit into the tour during Doors Open, Okay, but also to show to the province that they've got a real major gem in their midst, and they're underutilizing it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, they just, you know, it's government. They just don't know. Like, seriously. Like... (laughs) I mean, I'm not going to be political, but it's just, it's just so yeah. funny. Like, it's just, it's just sitting there. Well, you know, it. and that's the thing. Like, when we used to start meeting with individuals 
or little groups of people from the, the province to talk to them about the jail and its future. Mm-hmm. They were always people who are just people, like part of the government, and never anybody that was really into tourism mm-hmm. and understanding the touristic um, potential uh, and revenue that right. this place could could bring in right. um, for for the city of Winnipeg, for uh, the government. Uh, you know, it's a way to utilize a building that's sitting basically idle. Right. You know, again, you know, we're always talking about how do we bring people back downtown? Well, this would be a really easy thing to do. A hundred percent. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And like, I would assume, like, I know I, kudos to you, man. I just, I love your tours. I haven't been recently, but I've been mm-hmm. going to your tours, I think, since you've started. And um, I, one of my favorites is when we went to the legislature. I would assume that probably is the same. You couldn't do like a, an all like a tour specifically for just like an evening at the legislature, right? I know it goes up until like seven or something. So yeah, yeah, it's open to the public till mm-hmm. eight. Yeah, um, and again, it's too bad you couldn't do that with that too. Like again, I mean, that's a great piece of you know history mm-hmm. and, and just to absorb it, right? Like the atmosphere and everything. Oh yeah, and uh, I mean, the only way I know about some of the ghost stories in there is just from talking with security because mm-hmm. they're 24 7 right and so they've had weird experiences there um but yeah i cannot get permission to get into uh to do a ghost tour in the ledge and and now like they've completely changed all of their security stuff too so i can't even just go in with a pack of people oh. anymore and do a tour it's i have i'm, I'm still waiting actually to be vetted mm-hmm by security and uh, to see if I can even go in there to run a tour. Boy. So um, it's it's extremely stressful. And then on top of that, once I have the permission, um, I've asked for certain dates. I can only bring in a maximum of twenty five people per tour group. Oh, which okay. basically now eliminates any bus tours that I would do during the Halloween season because you know my buses were like 50 something people right and we would stop there first but now that's not going to be an option from what Uh, i gather uh, i mean i i recommend highly and we have on on our episodes whenever your name comes up we highly recommend your tours so i mean hands down but my favorite are when when you spend it's like with any location like it's nice that you have sort of like you know when you have like a wheel of cheesecake and you have like the sampler pack right (laughs) And <laughs> and it's like your tours are awesome because you get us in to all these locations just for a glimmer of time to 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 feel the atmosphere of the place. But the true experience is when you and that goes with anybody and anything in any location, you really get the feel for, a you know, like a, a house or a building or a business or a location that's really, really old. If you absorb it and if you're sitting there for a while, like you're not going to see a ghost mm-hmm. in that 45 minutes or so, like highly unlikely. Right. But it's just like, it's nice that when you do your tours and you have like, say we've like, I've done the, the Fort Gary hotel with you. We spent hours. We had so many experiences, like honestly, Kristen, like there was so much stuff going on. Right. So, I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's nice that when you can spend your time with a place, it's almost like the spirits then can appreciate why you're there. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, the element of time yeah, has no concept to them, but it's like, if you're a part of, if you're part of the woodwork for an evening, it's almost like they relax and then they, they kind of come out sort of. Yeah, and that I agree with that. Actually, um, interestingly enough, it's like um, I get to know their style, meaning the spirits, if you will, and their cues, and then they get to know me and my intent and what it is I'm there to do, and then it's almost like there's a working relationship <laughs> between well, sure. us, of course. And so it's like I kind of have an idea of how to either bring them forward. Or the cues and, and as to who it is that's stepping forward. It's it's kind of a weird mm-hmm. way to explain it, but um, yeah, I think there is definitely like a trust that develops after a while, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know who this is. This is so and so coming through. <laughs> they, so. It's, it's probably like they love your energy because energy is energy, and it always returns. And here's Kristen again. Here's her energy. So this is her. So let's come <laughs> out. You know. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Mm-hmm. Just like, and, and another favorite of mine is the little boy in Elmwood, right? The little boy with the, the cemetery. Yeah. Oh, my God. Poor little Yeah, kid. he was my first spirit teacher, I would say. Mm-hmm. The, because when I started doing the paranormal tours, there was never the intent of, you know, doing experiments or 
communicating with spirits. Right. It was just an opportunity to talk to people about history and mm-hmm. and ghost stories and have a little bit of fun and drive around the city in a bus, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but that's that's where it all started with with that little boy. Right. And you know, I again with the tours or you know just like just folklore, um, you know, like just anything to do with the city of Winnipeg it's such a haunted city like it's so so old right like people just don't have an appreciation or understanding on how how things existed back in the day and sometimes you know energy spirits linger they stay they they gravitate they you know like uh, just because Mm -hmm. one place is haunted doesn't mean they're they're destined to stay there like there are transient Mm -hmm. spirits and stuff like that I mean of course Elmwood Cemetery would be the Mecca, right? Like it's it's so it's so big in there. I mean, mm-hmm. I've personally walked to the back of it, and you, it's kind of creepy when you don't hear any traffic or any sound or anything. Like it's it, it it's almost yeah. like it's a different. It's almost like it's like a you don't know where you are. Like it just I don't know if it's a void or a, a vortex. Like I mean, not to sound all weird and creepy or anything but it just it's such a different place and you can see why it would retain a lot of the spirits so not to say that they have to stay there but I mean like if you're going to go ghost hunting per se I don't like the word hunting but you know Mm -hmm. connecting ghost connecting um for sure like Elmwood is just amazing day or night really like it you know it's creepier at night yeah it's a lovely cemetery yeah Mm mm-hmm and, you know, there's like, well, I mean, we're talking ghosts and history here. I mean, Dr. Hamilton's buried in Elmwood. Right. And he's the gentleman who, 100 years ago, started the, the whole paranormal circle mm-hmm. and investigation uh, here in Winnipeg and basically put Winnipeg on the map for paranormal research. Right. And so he and his family are buried at Elmwood Cemetery. Yeah. And, you know, that's uh, that's a fan favorite of ours, like, that's the reason kind of why I started the podcast and I, I brought Cher into this years ago because we had an obsession, you know, with spirits and we had our own experiences and Hamilton House, that was like our first episode, you know, like we were just mm. like enamored by just like just the whole thought of what he was trying to accomplish over, well, I guess now a hundred years ago, right? Like, I yeah. mean, you know, back in the day that was poo-pooed on to a certain extent and he was such a respectable gentlemen i mean spiritualism was kind of like a niche parlor trick kind of thing you know that some of the elite would do but at the same time like he was in in it with like a, a real a lot of notable people right like uh sherlock sherlock holmes writer i'm sorry it's early i not enough coffee um holmes yeah um <laughs> I know, I know it's like, i'm so professional Conan doyle Conan doyle <laughs> that's it Conan doyle. yeah yeah so i mean you know, like that guy was like totally into it. Like he was doing seances at the Marlboro and stuff when he stayed here too, right? So I mean, that's right. Yeah. Um, but we also had Canada's Prime Minister, um, uh, uh, Mackenzie King. Can- oh yeah, yeah. Was right. a, he was also into this stuff, and he was part of Hamilton's group. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I mean, that's a pretty major name Back to be associated with something like this. Yeah. You know. And never mind him um, doing, I love that he was doing the telepathic experiments with the uh, the clergy at the church on Coburg over there. Like, wow. Like, that's crazy, yeah. right? You know? I mean, that's good crazy, but it's just like, you know, back in the day, that must have been really frowned upon to a certain extent. So, Well, I think that, yeah, from my understanding, like, when he initially started to get into this stuff, uh, yeah, he did try to keep it on the down low mm-hmm. and just brought in, like, very reputable honest type of people, you know, like clergymen, constables, lawyers, um, you know, the name Pitt Blotto Law Firm is a big name oh, still right. in Winnipeg. Yes, and yes. the the first gentleman, like Mr. Pitt Blotto, who started it, mm-hmm. he was a member of the group. Yep. Dr. Chown, um, he's another big name in Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, he had all these people that he really trusted and, and their integrity was always considered very right. uh, high. Yeah. So for them to be involved in this, mm-hmm. and then, I mean, that just that speaks volumes in my mind in terms of the level, the caliber of the investigative research that he was, Hamilton was trying to strive for. Yeah. And once the photograph started to come out and showing all this weird stuff, mm-hmm. that's when I think the reputation started to go outside of the Winnipeg boundaries. And that's right. how Conan Doyle and... Mackenzie King, you know, they started finding out about this. Mm -hmm, Exactly. Like, so, you know, mm -hmm. just, just the footprint that he had with that in Winnipeg, you know, back in the day, um, like, I'm, I'm surprised it doesn't get 
more attention internationally, Mm -hmm. you know, than it does. Uh, There was a documentary on Netflix last year, a couple of years ago, and it was about life after death. And it was like a five, six part series. And one of it was on spiritualism. And they talked about all the other uh, parapsychology and all that kind of good stuff or societal research is what it is, right? Um, And Mm -hmm. they, they were talking about that. And I was burned because they didn't even mention like the the foothold that Dr. Hamilton had tried to establish here, right? And I'm like, I actually yeah. emailed them, and I'm like, if you do another documentary, you have to mention this man. <laughs> I'm just, I'm a little. Well, weird. you know, that's interesting that you mentioned that because that's very true. Um, I think because stuff happened in Winnipeg, stuff happened in Canada, people forget mm-hmm. uh, or completely miss. Yeah. Um, I had the same point about a serial killer that we ended up executing at the Vaughn Street Jail. And people don't know about this guy. And he's like one of those big ones that should be on the same level as H.H. H. Holmes from mm-hmm. Chicago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, and some of the other ones. Because his story is really quite fascinating and and tragic at the same time. And yet I never hear about his story on other people's podcasts and things of of that nature. So I find it really interesting that certain things get picked up and other things don't. Um, But with regards to Hamilton, yeah, like I'm actually in the works uh, with on a documentary docuseries, I guess, with a gentleman, he and I are working on this project together and we are discussing Hamilton and and, and bringing in some of that stuff into the documentary. But uh, uh, it's, it's kind of covering a bit like the history of spiritualism in Winnipeg and how does it, uh, how did it evolve and, and how mm-hmm. is it uh, sort of thing? How is it happening right now? Um, we were hoping to be screening it to the public in November, but due to funding and COVID issues, uh, we've had to delay it till next spring. But, you know, that might be something worth discussing further a little bit later on, um, closer to screening time. But, yeah, we are trying to bring in history and stories and information about Hamilton's work here in Winnipeg in that documentary. Right, right. And, you know, definitely, you know, we would love to help you promote what we can of that, because I feel it's just very important, you know, like the whole, cool. that whole movement. Yeah, so we'll, we'll discuss that part later. But um, going back to Square Pigs, um, we want to let people know more. And I mean, you don't need us to advertise. We just think you're just the coolest chick possible, right? So I mean, like, the stuff... <laughs> (laughs) The stuff that you, the stuff that you present and the way you present it, so professional and just the information, it just blows my mind. So Square Pig Tours, what, what do you have on the scope for Halloween for the, for the October season? Yeah, well, I have, um, basically I'll be doing the Broadway Ghost Walk, Mm -hmm. uh, which is about an hour and a half to two hours, uh, walking, uh, downtown from the ledge to the Fort Gary Hotel. And there I'll be talking about haunted sites as well as causes of paranormal phenomenon and different ways in which they'll present themselves. If by some chance we can get access to the ledge, then we'll go inside and do a little bit of uh, experimentation and or dis- discussion of the ghosts in there. Mm-hmm. And maybe even the Fort Gary Hotel. There's some policies that have changed there too, but we're oh. hoping to get inside. Right, right. Um, so that would be one option. And then the second option with me specifically would be to do a three-hour investigation at the old firefighters museum on Maple Street. Okay. And that is a place where you can actually try some interaction with spirits uh, through table tipping, spirit boards, K2 meters, dowsing rods, pendulums, and that sort of thing. Sweet. Plus I have Kelly from the Winnipeg Paranormal Group who will also come and she brings some of her equipment. Love Kelly. Such as a ghost box and things like that. Right, right. So I have some spots left for that one. That was October 22nd. Okay. The third option is doing the Exchange District Ghost Walk with Matthew Comas, Mm -hmm. who is a two-time author on Haunted Places in Winnipeg, and you guys can book his tour through me as well. I think he also has a book on Manitoba too, right? Haunted Manitoba, I think there was, or was it included in the Winnipeg? I'm not sure, but anyway, um, what was I going to say? So with regards, okay, so you had your first, that was your first the other night, the one that I missed, uh, the, the firefighters, right? You had the, uh, mm-hmm. how did that go? Do you have any any highlights? Yeah, well, you know, the first one was okay. Um, and then I did one just this past Thursday, so just a couple of nights ago. And, you know, we had some interesting things, uh, really good K2 meter activity, some table tipping stuff. Mm-hmm. But one of the weirdest things, 
that we're not really sure how to explain it at the moment, but we went up into the attic, which is like all raw, Ooh. exposed beams and flooring and all this sort of stuff. So we were up there doing a couple of different activities. And when we were done, mm -hmm. we all got up and we started, because we were sort of sitting on, standing on the floor. And when we got up, I noticed this weird white footprint. Oh. Just one, one shoe print on the floor, uh, just underneath somebody, like, where we were sitting. And it was like, okay, wait a minute. This doesn't make any logical sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's almost like someone had drywall dust on their shoe, and they made one single footprint. Oh. And, you know, so we took pictures of it, and we looked at it, and yeah. we documented it with the documentarian. Um, but I said, it, it, it's very strange. Like, how does that happen? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, I guess the only logical thing I could say is, like, somehow, mm -hmm. somebody, maybe before we even came upstairs, put a footprint on the floor. Um, but the the weird thing is that I can't explain is that, you know, if you had walked through some dust on your shoe, then there should be Two. sort of a strong imprint, and then each sub subsequent um, yeah, yeah. footprint would be, you know, less and less and less drywall dust on the one shoe, but it's like right in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. But then like <laughs> there's only one footprint. Yeah. So But I would think typically I, somebody I would have one could say maybe it's a, a a footprint left by spirit, but yeah. so I'm on the fence. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know how to explain it. Yeah, it's, no no I get it. It's a weird thing. So that was that was uh, what happened just on Thursday night. And I nobody remembers seeing it when we walked in. Right. Oh, that's interesting. You know, so mm -hmm. What about uh, the table tipping? How did that go? Yeah, I think it went really well. Um, you know, once the table starts to do a little bit of movement, what's really interesting to me is if the K2 meters are also reacting. And so we had actually three K2 meters on the table surface. Yeah. So even worst case scenario, if somebody thought that uh, a person was moving the table around, nobody's touching the K2 meters. So how do you explain that, you know? Exactly. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and sometimes one K2 meter would react, sometimes mm -hmm. two, sometimes mm -hmm. all three would, mm -hmm. would do their thing simultaneously. Right. And the lady who volunteers there on the weekends, because uh, the museum is only open Sundays. Oh, okay. Um, and when she came later in the evening and she would start talking, the table and the K2 meters reacted to her. Hmm. And it's kind of like the spirit knows, knows who she is mm -hmm. and was interacting wanted to wanted to speak specifically to her right so she just had the conversation and that's where we started getting most of the reactions hmm. that's cool I have to highly promote the table tipping I like I said I've, I've probably been over the years probably maybe on I want to say six or seven of your tours at various times even before like giving up the ghost kind of thing right so mm -hmm. um in saying that uh, when I went to one of your tours at the Fort Gary Hotel, and that was an evening where we experienced a whole bunch of weird shit, pardon my language, but we swear and drink on this podcast, but that's okay. And uh, even though it's 10 a.m. on a Saturday and I'm just doing the coffee, but um, we had so much weird stuff, but the table tipping, I tell you, like the table tipping was something I could never explain because I think I was more of a skeptic back then than I am now because now we're more educated with a lot of this stuff you know and mm -hmm. um but I was kind of skeptical I mean sometimes things draw to me though too not to sound like ooh, I'm like of that nature but like your table tipping at the Fort Gary Hotel there was only like four of us five of us on this table and it was whipping around the dance floor like up on that in the ballroom upstairs right mm -hmm. and it was you could not keep up with your two fingers on the table. There's just no way somebody would have had that kind of command on the, like it was like whipping us around. We were like all four or five of us participants were struggling to keep our fingers on the table. And it was whipping us around. Like you cannot explain that. Like there was just, it was fast. It, it just, it wasn't stopping. It was, it was mind blowing. Yeah. Like you felt like an energy there, you know what I'm saying? Guiding the table, you know, it was like, yeah. it was trying to shake us off. Like it was so weird. And <laughs> yeah. 
And then I remember the other another time I did the table tipping on one of your tours was when we went to the the lower Fort Gary, the jail, uh, in the, in the jail, right? And uh, yeah. we weren't as much dancing or moving with the table. We we're all sitting at the table, and then you're like, "Move the table towards jazz." And this thing was like coming at me, and it was like right up to my like you know it would be like maybe a foot away, yeah. and then it was like right up against my stomach, and I'm like, "Okay, you proved your point. It's okay now." Oh my you know? gosh! Yeah. yeah. So it's, oh, it's for real, like for real, like that is legit, you know? Like yeah, it's that's been a really interesting experience for sure. Like mm-hmm. the way. You know, sometimes it, it'll be like doing really dramatic things and really move a lot. Right. Other times it'll be a little more subtle. You might get taps from underneath the table. Um, you know, it'll sway, it'll vibrate or, you know, move a little bit back and forth. Yeah. But um, almost always I get some something on the table um, occurring. And uh, it's, it's a very interesting experience, that's for sure. Yeah. Like like the one at the, um, the jail at Lower Fort Gary. Um, that mm-hmm. was the same thing too. You had the the meters on the table and they were like spiking, you know, you had the meters mm-hmm. and, and the cool thing is when I played, um, I had my phone on the table because I was just recording the audio through the phone. Cause when we go out, I don't have time to set up the mics and all that kind of stuff. This is just mm-hmm. mobile, mobile, right? It's yeah. surprisingly enough, the iPhones do a great job with the recording to a certain degree. Right. And I, I mm-hmm. left the, I left the phone recording on the table and you can feel and hear the, the the legs of the table grinding into the cement like if that isn't mm. realism for you I don't know what is right like you could just hear it just <laughs> kind of grinding and making its way and 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 rotating around and moving and stuff and the way it was doing it nobody would have that kind of control over a table you know so mm-hmm. anyway that's just me but uh yeah I know your tours I I highly recommend anybody that wants to experience authentic uh, even the historic tours you do, like if you want to give a little detail on that as well. Like, I, I mean, you're doing this all the time. It's not just Halloween, you know. So correct, if, yeah. If you want to give a little detail, on yeah. It. So I do try to do the uh, the paranormal experimentation tours. Like I start early in the season, you know, May. Mm-hmm. Uh, try to do a couple of months. Um, it's been obviously uh, not active because of COVID, and then this year um, it was kind of a weird tour season because a lot of the venues and stuff are still kind of. Uh, not quite up and ready to go with certain things. And uh, so, yeah, the only place I had this year was the Firefighters Museum. Okay. Um, and um, I think Dal number two, but again, it just it was a weird summer because I think people decided to go away more yeah. for the summer. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, definitely going to be up and running full, full force next year. Excellent. Kelly is your kind of like your main psychic right now. I know you had Donna. Donna was awesome. Um, you know, Nobody can replace mm-hmm. Donna per se, but Kelly's pretty awesome too. She's with the Winnipeg Paranormal Group, correct? Yeah, she's uh, like like uh, like myself. She does the with the equipment and invites spirit in. Mm-hmm. She's not a psychic or a medium. So oh, I'm she sorry. She has okay. more of the high tech equipment, and she does stuff where she goes into people's personal homes, okay, to do investigations and help people figure out if there's ghosts and stuff, right. And that's um, good whereas I'm more of a public entertainer, mm-hmm. uh, giving the public an opportunity <laughs> to explore the subject matter in a in a open space you're a historian you're not a public entertainer <laughs> you're, yes, you're uh that's true too we call um, ourselves we call you know, ourselves and, and audio Winnipeg's history it's hard not to become a bit of an entertainer of because course. some of the history of is course. So funny oh i know um <laughs> we call ourselves audio curators to make it you know mm-hmm. aka we, we we like to talk uh stuff about ghosts drink and swear and i didn't quite make the whole interview look at that my speaker died but Okay. Oh, no. um, that's that's what happens around here. Um, yeah. My office, my office is my home office, my work office. It's my mm-hmm. uh, like like nine to five, my eight to four office. It's my crafting room. It's my pod lounge. It's a little bit of everything. So there we go. Okay, I got you back. Um, yeah. So in any event, but then I lost myself. Uh, in any event. With regards to your your tours and everything, uh, I, I consider you more of a historian. Like, I mean, you're like a curator of sorts. I mean, you're perpetuating, you're perpetuating the the 
um, how do you, how do I want to say, not just the history, but just the feel, right? Like you're, mm-hmm. you're putting a spin on it on how it was back in the day or, or what happened. Like, I mean, I think that's something everybody takes away from your tours. Not only that they're a little smarter, but you, you put your own personal spin on it to the effect that people, like the realism is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Well, you know, that's interesting. Like, yeah, I kind of do um, describe myself as be, like, or my, 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 my museum, um, the curator of the, the city of Winnipeg, right? So Winnipeg is your museum. Mm-hmm. And I'm there to tell you the stories behind the buildings and the street names and the individuals that moved and shaped our city. Right. <laughs> and have some fun with it at the same time. So much of this is going like I find, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, Sharon, myself, we find that, you know, all the stuff you used to hear when you were kids growing up, like, you know, all the uh, the folklore and all the, uh, you know, all the stuff like ghost stories, you know, or all, all the, oh, again, Saturday morning, not enough coffee. Uh, <laughs> just, just, you know, what the stories are, are, are disappearing, right? Because, you know, you've got technology, people don't really hand stuff down anymore about houses or locations or buildings that were or things that happened, history slash hauntings. So, I mean, it, it's kind of nice that you can go to your tours and, and, and get the full, like the full meal deal, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. um, and, and that's kind of like what we want to do too with, with our stories. And we want to keep it, keep it alive and making sure people that don't forget what's happened or, you know, just, just document it, I guess, is what it is. And, and we, we appreciate people like you 110% for sure. No, thanks. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, I've probably yacked long enough and I've kept you, I could talk to you for hours, I swear to God. And, and we will, <laughs> when we can get you back into our po- a pod lounge here with Sharon and I, and maybe even Kelly too, you know, like, we'd love to hear your stories. Like, this was just yeah. sort of like a, a scope, you know, just uh, before the, the coolest the, the, the best season ever, which is like fall and Halloween. So this was just like a little uh, a little taste. And uh, we want to bring you guys back and see if we can, you know, really have a good sit down and, and hear some stories that you've experienced okay. along the way. I, I would love that. For we sure. would love that. I would love to do that. Yeah, for sure. We do you drink? <laughs> Uh, the coffee, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alcohol sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, we'll lure you in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, we sit around, we yak, we have a couple cocktails, and uh, we talk about spooky shit, and uh, we have some food, you know, <laughs> cheese snacks and all that good stuff, right? So cool. we just, mm-hmm. yeah, we make it like a girls' night in almost, you know, just uh, talking okay. talking about good stuff. We'd love to have you I'm guys. I'm, go- I'm good for that. <laughs> good. Awesome. But, uh, oh, and about the firefighter tour. Um I know you don't really listen to us per se, but um, we have, uh, we call her our third wheel is Jen. And she is actually uh, a 25 year veteran firefighter with the city of Winnipeg, right? And oh, wow. um, yeah, she, uh, she fills in for share on the odd occasion when if we've got a, like an outing or, but you know, with COVID, we too have not really done a lot. We, we had so much scheduled, like we had um, spirits with spirits, we were going to do a bar pub tour crawl and and have our listeners come out and you know that kind of stuff right um and Mm -hmm. you know so say when Cher can't make it Jen has been able to come out with us or she's been here and she's got some freaky stories I tell you you know like just you know like uh, firefighter stories as well um you know she's got something in her house like little people anyway but uh in any event she believes you know like she's a believer and and she heard herself as an optimistic skeptic but being a firefighter I would love to bring her with me on your firefighter um the next oh, time you go yeah. to Maple Street that would be great yeah just because a lot of because like the museum is is like basically manned by people who either volunteer at the firefighters or have some direct connection with firefighters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so but, they're retired firefighters and they're, this is what they do as their hobby and their activity. Yeah. So yeah, that would be awesome. That'd be really neat. Because given the fact that she is of that occupation, whatever is there could maybe be drawn out even more. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, that'd be cool. Uh, I've yacked enough because I am a yacker and uh, <laughs> I'm in desperate need of another cup of coffee or something. So we'd like to thank Kristen. Have her back anytime. Again, this was Giving Up the Ghost podcast and uh, have a good night. Bye, Kristen. Thank you. Thanks.